Hey y'all, it's Lena to intro our podcast episode with Taylor Bringhurst. Taylor is a California native whose experience in design has led her to create fun and groovy art pieces. Recently, I was able to sit down with Taylor over Zoom and learn more about her inspiring California roots and the growth of her personal art style. Discovering her passion for digital design as a fashion student, Taylor has taken inspiration from her surf community and artists such as Georgia O'Keeffe to create her own free-flowing art pieces. I think Taylor will be a great example of how we can all pull inspiration from our communities to create something uniquely our own. Hi. Hello. How are you? didn't realize how quick 2.30 came up on me, so. Oh. <laughs> are you good to go? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk today. I know you have a busy schedule, um, but if you want, we can just hop right in. I'm just going to talk about your work today and like what inspires you, what drove you to like the work you do now, your aesthetics and all that good stuff. By you telling me a bit about yourself, where did you grow up, um, what were your interests and passions as a child, maybe if you want to start talking about if any of those things or how any of those things maybe led to like an artistic interest, um, yeah. Okay, well, I grew up in Southern California. Um, I grew up kind of like all over, a little bit in um, Orange County, mostly Ventura County, and I lived in LA for two years or so. And I went to school there and studied fashion. So, yeah, I've been here. Um, I live in Ventura now. Mm. But as a child, I'd say, like, yeah, I was always drawing or sketching or, like, doing anything of that nature. I don't know. It just, I enjoyed it. It was never anything, like, super incredible. Yes. But it was just, like, a fun hobby. And up until, like, high school, I started to, like, paint and draw more, definitely more seriously. Um I always thought like I had to be so intense and like draw these super realistic like detailed insane like portraits and I do a lot of charcoal and like portraiture a lot and I just like realized I just didn't love like putting so much focus and extreme like detail into my artwork I wanted eventually to get somewhere where I could be like really free and just kind of have something in front of me and then like mold it instead of have, having to like spend hours on one tiny piece it just I wanted it all to come together and I kind of got super discouraged in art um, around that time like when I just started feeling like oh I don't really know if like this is what I like to do and I was studying fashion like I said so I kind of like didn't create anything for a while but I feel like like having a break it really helped me kind of like reflect and <laughs> like understand okay like this isn't what I want to do but I'm going to try some new things and I fell in love with like this graphic aesthetic that um after I learned how to surf which I was like 18 or 19 years old I like kind of got involved in that community and there's a lot of art and design and just like all types of really fun stuff and like being in that atmosphere it like really inspired me and I saw like a whole bunch of stuff that I've never seen before and just like a lot of this super cool colorful work and um a lot of graphics like done on the computer and stuff so mm -hmm. I was like I'm gonna try this and it was just yeah. like I don't know like I was like I don't know if this is anything like that will come out of it but like I just so enjoyed like I don't know just the really simple graphic work and like I love that like 70s aesthetic and mm -hmm. I'm gonna give this a shot I like feel passionate about it so yeah and that's kind of how I arrive in like the place I am today but mm -hmm. more like recently I kind of dove into like other things and just kind of like I guess I lean more into a, like an art thing instead of like graphic design and mm -hmm. um, I've been really like into flowers lately so I don't know I just I felt like my work kind of like changes as I like grow up I guess mm -hmm. and like have new interests and kind of like experience more of the world around me so yeah. studying it is like a whole nother world because you're like oh I, I'm just gonna be able to draw whatever I want all yeah. the time it's like, no it's yeah there's so many rules yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right um and I know you kind of talked about uh, when you got into the surf community, like 
the artists and inspirations um, that kind of spoke to you then. I just want to ask like what your um, biggest inspiration for your art is. So if you could go into more detail, like who were those artists that inspired you? Or maybe there's like specific people. Um, and then there's the design and aesthetic. Is that something you've always used? Or could you also like walk us through a timeline um, of how your art has changed or inspired throughout your life? Um, I think you kind of touched on a lot of that, but if you, there's any like specific examples um, that really speak to you on how that growth has come, of, come about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like earlier, I mean, my, like, I feel like my aesthetic in my eyes, like it's slightly, it like goes in different paths, but um, throughout my life, it's definitely changed. Like I kind of said how I like had really realistic stuff and I went more simple. Um, there's like hundreds I like when I first started getting into graphic design, I like, well, I guess not really graphic design, but like graphic art more. I yeah. there was just, I was constantly like looking at art and there's hundreds of examples I could bring up right now. Like there's so many amazing people out there and who have lived in the past as well, who mm -hmm. have like had huge influence on me. And um, a lot of it was like looking through books. Tumblr was really big for me because mm -hmm. it, people kind of bring everything together in like a certain aesthetic mm -hmm. but, like if I had to say like artists like um obviously Matisse because mm -hmm. and I love how flat like at least with his cutouts like how flat and just these like stark contrasting colors like I found that like really soothing and mm -hmm. also it was just so simple like I was like I feel like I could pull something together like that makes me have the same type of emotion mm -hmm. and yeah like Matisse um right now really big one for me has been Georgia O'Keeffe because I told you I was like really into flowers mm -hmm. and um John Coburn mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his last name but his work is like very similar to Matisse as well it's kind of more of like abstract shapes and colors I mm -hmm. think so I feel like those like that's really what led me like aside from yeah like being in that surfing community and like mm -hmm. kind of a researching graphic design mm -hmm. but um yeah I feel like all that kind of like came together and like I kind of came up with something and I was just like I'm just like going with it this like thing like based on all my inspiration like this is kind of what I came up with so yeah and I it kind of worked for me and awesome. it's you know like not every day do you like love everything that you create but like most days I'm pretty happy with it yeah. So, yeah. Here. Yay. <laughs> this is also just going into like more about your art and like the process that goes through it. Um, so kind of like what steps do you take to get to your final product? Um, and then within those steps, if you want to talk about maybe like what editing platforms are you use or materials, is there like a mix of hands-on work and then also like uh, media and online work? Like how does that, what does that look like for you when you're creating a piece? Um, so that's really like I like that question. Um, and this is when I'm like looking at other people's work. I'm always like, "How do you do that? Yeah. That's so cool!" Mm -hmm. Like I'm nobody. Like nobody really talks about those sorts of things. And sometimes you like don't even know like is this digital? Is this mm -hmm. like in real life? Mm -hmm. and so yeah, that's a good question. But um, like ninety percent of what I make is on um, is digital, mm -hmm. and it's I usually use Illustrator. So when I get to that point, like usually I don't have like over like like throughout the week and stuff. I'll if I like have something come to me, I'll like sketch it out. Like I could probably even show you. Oh yeah, please do. <laughs> this morning, right before I left for work, I like I don't know if you can see this, but I had this little idea, and that's like how messy they are. I just like yeah wrote it down really fast, and I was like, cause I'll forget. So. <laughs> I kind of keep those around and mm -hmm. then when I get the urge to like sit down on my laptop or whatever I'll like kind of look through them and kind of try to like sketch them out but usually they turn out completely different mm -hmm. um, but yeah like I use illustrator um I kind of I'm like slightly self-taught like not really but I did take classes after I learned everything and I kind of just got stuck in my ways of how I learned how to do I kind of I don't know if my like process is very efficient but um I love the pencil tool mm -hmm. if anyone else who's gonna read or listen to this um pencil tool is very helpful because <laughs> yeah, like the pen tool oh the pen tool it's like 
I just like the free the free form of the puzzle tool. But anyway, like I'll usually just kind of play around like with different shapes and I move them around and I move like colors, not move colors, but I change the colors around and like I kind of just like puzzle it together until I'm like, okay, I like the way this looks and like that's that. But um I guess that's like the one thing I don't like about drawing in real life. Mm -hmm. Like I really love to be able to switch things out like really fast and you can kind of experiment a lot more. Yeah, that's why I love Illustrator. And then when I'm happy with what I did in Illustrator, I put it into Photoshop and that's mm -hmm. kind of how I get that like grainy textury effect. Um, mm -hmm. I love the ripple ripple effect mm -hmm. in Photoshop. Um, it kind of gives it these like squiggly edges and it takes away that like super harsh digital feeling. So yeah, Photoshop's like the best. Um, it kind of gives it that more like I don't know, just a little bit more worn in so it doesn't look so extremely like mm -hmm. digital and I really like that. So yeah, and that's literally it. Like mm -hmm. I use Illustrator, Photoshop, and then I do um I do like overlays in Photoshop, um, mm -hmm. like texture, and then sometimes I just do I use like blur a little bit because mm -hmm. it kind of softens the edges as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have like a set like thing I do every time. It kind of depends and I just kind of mess with it until I enjoy what came out and then yeah yeah that's awesome yeah yeah um sometimes I paint I'm not that good at painting I found out it's like I'm not very patient yeah I feel like when something's sitting for a couple of days too I'll like get a new idea about it and be like oh I do not like this anymore like mm -hmm. I need to start all over so it's hard for me to get painting done yeah I do paint sometimes and I like i want to experiment more in painting but I just I don't know and then this is kind of more like futuristic based question um but are you hoping is there like somewhere you're hoping to move with your work futuristically um or directionally and do you have like dreams or aspirations for the future of your art and or do you see those artistic abilities inspiration changing or evolving as you continue to create yeah. um that's a good question too um honestly the only thing I really want is mm -hmm. to like keep enjoying art and like just because like I'm not I don't really want to make a career out of it like mm -hmm. it's more of like a it just like kind of allows me to connect with people and I enjoy like the freedom of just being able to do whatever I want with my work and not being like oh no like I have to pay my bills and <laughs> yeah so, like, yeah because people always ask me like oh like, are you gonna do a career in art and I was like I'm just seeing where life takes me mm -hmm. um but like I, don't, I mean who knows maybe mm -hmm. but I really like what I see in the future is just like I hope that I can keep creating and like learning and I'm expanding and experimenting and like the kind of the beauty of it like it's just like it's endless like you can do whatever you could come up with in your brain so I think like my only hope is that I just never stop learning about art and you know myself and like what I like and mm -hmm. yeah so that's pretty much all I really want for the future I just don't want to give up because like, yeah you get stuck you know when you get more involved in like art and design and you actually start looking at the world around you from that perspective you're mm -hmm. like wow like this is crazy like mm -hmm. that house has an awesome color scheme yeah that's the cool thing about art and design like you can it's like there's a whole nother world out there that's like hidden to mm -hmm. some people and it's like you can actually see that when you look around if that makes any sense yeah i know i totally get it it's like a whole different part of your brain is like awake yeah um so this one i little did a little um instagram stalking on your instagram yeah. and i noticed um you're talking about kind of like making art in the pandemic and so i just want to ask um like kind of you talk about your artistic transition during the pandemic of being like a private account posting more personal doodles to gaining a much larger like support or following um and I just want to know like how did that make you feel and like do you feel even with all of like the negative aspects of the pandemic um did it like positively affect you in any way and the growth of like your own work yeah um yeah that it was all like weird like I think everyone was so like just on their phones on their laptops because we were you know there's like nothing else really going on like in our own like little personal bubble in the mm -hmm. world like it was just crazy like we all had to sit and be like staring at stuff and I like just was like I think this is the time where I guess I should just try to 
like start doing stuff like just start you know Mm -hmm. and I was not trying to do anything like I was literally just having fun I was not Mm -hmm. serious at all I think like I was no, I think I, I honestly had like 50 followers because I only let people I know follow me. Yeah. It's really ironic now. Like, like I only let people I follow in or I know in real life. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, like it was really weird, honestly. And I'm a kind of a private person. So at first I was like, I mean, like I have maybe like, I can't even remember the number, but mm-hmm. I'm not like an exorbitantly like Instagram yeah. famous person or anything, but mm-hmm. I actually enjoy like a small community. So honestly, like I was just like, this is interesting. Like I'm just going to see where this goes. And yeah. it definitely um, had a positive impact mm-hmm. in the sense of like, I made a lot of friends, like like-minded friends, mm-hmm. like even if it was just like over the internet for a while, mm-hmm. there's like a lot of like-minded people on there and like super supportive people. And I think, yeah, it definitely positively impacted my work because I felt, like, motivated. And I also felt like, you know, I was like, oh, like, okay, like, I'm really going to dig deeper and, like, you know, like, try to expand and, my, like, evolve in my style and, like, actually put a lot of effort into this. And, like, it just – I probably wouldn't have been so, like – I wouldn't have kept up with it as much, I guess, if you don't have, like, a lot of people kind of cheering you on. So. yeah. It was really cool and I'm like now it doesn't it's not as weird anymore like it's I'm I have a lot of people I don't know who follow me which is weird to me because I yeah I never really did that but people are so nice like people are so kind and supportive and it's like it like kind of opens your eyes you're like this is so cool like these people I have no idea who they are like they're so nice like I met this couple on Instagram and they've been so nice to me and like super supportive and they actually like sent me a book in the mail and because I was talking about how I like I was really into flowers and they sent me a book and she like DM'd me and she was like oh um we have this vintage flower book like do you want it and I was like oh yeah (laughs) but I was also like this is like do you want me to pay for like what do you want me this is so strange and yeah no just like you need it like it's for inspiration and it was like I was like blown away also it's the same people or not the same people but like the people who are like yeah like keep going like you're doing so good like that keeps you going and that keeps like okay I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna post this I don't care Mm -hmm. we'll usually receive it well and then you're like oh okay it's not really about like the validation but I guess yeah getting you pushed in the right direction and Mm -hmm. like and in a way for me, like, I get into this thing, like, just to be honest, like, I'll create something and be like, oh my gosh, this sucks. Like, I hate it. I don't want to share this. And, like, I'll talk to a friend in real life or something and be like, oh, yeah, I made this. And just post it. And then, you know, someone has something really nice to say about it and it, like, can really change your perspective on your um, own. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. Um, this is a bit of a broader one, um, but just with like inspiring other women and girls out there who want to get into art or like art, um, is there any advice you would give to other women and girls who are trying to pave their own artistic path or like find what inspires them? Um, yeah. Um, it's like, I feel like I'm, this is like really good question. And like, I wish I had this answer when even now I like I don't know if I'm like the best amazing person to give advice I feel like I'm so in the beginning and just figuring everything out too but I feel like if I had to go back and like tell myself something and something I would want other girls and anybody who's interested in starting like just you just need to start like don't be afraid to make ugly stuff don't like be so hard on yourself and just like enjoy it enjoy your process like just do it like that's what I would say because I needed to hear that especially at the beginning like Mm -hmm. just start just sit down and make something and you will feel better it's always true yeah but yeah that would be like my best advice and don't compare yourself to other people but that is really hard yeah easier said than done but that's like a big one yeah yeah. amazing yeah I totally get that and especially like in the age of social media creating something that is uniquely yours can be hard especially when like talk about don't compare yourself to anybody else's like 
um, like there's always art to look at. There's always something to look at. And like, sometimes it is hard to just like focus on what inspires you because you're like, oh, I like this or I like that. But it can also be like, as much as maybe that is hard, it's also very inspiring, especially like with you, you have so much more of a support group now and like this community, which there's like definitely positive and negatives to it, but yeah. That no, is. yeah, that's, I absolutely agree. Like mm -hmm. sometimes it can be very overwhelming. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, it's like being bombarded with like art and content. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my brain, I'm like, I don't know if you experience this, but sometimes I'm just like, did I think of this? Like, yes, I understand. I'm like, I just feel like there's so much like swirling around in my head and like, mm -hmm. you know, like it's really inspiring, but at the same time, it sometimes I feel like you just need to take a break. And take yeah. Break yeah so maybe maybe part of the advice is be yourself and but also don't be afraid to take a break <laughs> yeah, take a break that's yeah. true especially if you get into like a like a cycle of negative thoughts you're like oh i hate what i make like mm -hmm. this is just i know a lot of people who i've talked about who also create things who go through this and like, mm -hmm. the only thing that helps is just to step away from it and like just you know go out do whatever not yeah. art <laughs> and like round yourself with people you like <laughs> yeah and you'll have like this fresh perspective i feel like when you come back and be like, yeah. yeah i was just overreacting or, yeah yeah negative headspace yeah yeah, yeah. amazing i love that advice yeah, i'm really excited like thanks yeah. for having me of course thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us right. Bye. Bye. have a good day you too